G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. I thought it was time for another mini quilt. So I've designed a little mini vintage camper quilt and how perfect for diving into your stash. Look at all those colors. It's a very animated, very sketchy and super busy little quilt. So you use up all of your little scraps. You're gonna need a great pattern. And I've got one of those. You just need to click on that link in the description below set your printer to printed actual size and your pattern templates will be spot on so what are we waiting for let's get sewing so let's make a start on our little mini quilt and let's go through all of the things that we're going to need now to start with we're going to be having a top and a bottom panel and they're going to be joined together to create a little horizon line there that's all part of it. Now I have interfaced my fabrics with a fusible woven medium weight interfacing. I just like a more stable little finish. Most of mine I usually end up just hanging up. So I really want the little quilt to hold itself. Um, you don't have to interface it, but I definitely, I find it's easier to work with. Um, so we start off with our top and our bottom panel. Now I've got your measurements written on your template pieces, but your lower panel is 7.5 centimeters by 22 centimeters. And your upper panel is 15.5 centimeters by 22 centimeters. Um, and then from there, we have all of our little pieces. Now all of our little pieces that go on that create our little picture, they are all cut from your choice fabric or felt and they all have fusible webbing applied or what you would call heat and bond so and and the color choices are entirely up to you now if you have a look i've got a video that shows you gives you some helpful tips about cutting out and laying out your templates just to make it easier i'm going to put a link to that video up there you want to have a look at that if you like, um, that may help you out. But um, just cutting out your little pieces very carefully is really important. And remember that when we're making anything with heat and bond, we're tracing on the back. So we have to reverse our pattern piece to the way we want it to sit. So I want my, my big tree to be at the front here. So when I trace it out, I reverse it because then we take our backing off and turn it over. So you see how that works? And that applies to all of the little pieces here that have a direction. So we start, we've got our little tree piece. Now, a couple of just uh, things that I will say about this layout, your little tree section, make sure that the color of those trees aren't too bright and aren't comparing, aren't competing with your little camper Piece. So you want your camper to stand out more than your little trees because they're more in the distance. So you can see with this little one, I made the trees a lot lighter than the foreground because the foreground is closer to us. It just helps with the uh, artistic dimension of the picture. You can see here, but this one I chose predominantly pinks. Um, I love pink. Pink is my signature color. So, but this time I'm going to go for some even brighter colors and I'm substituting my green grass for a brown print there. And I think it's really gonna make everything stand out. Now it's a very busy little quilt, very busy little picture. So think carefully about the different colors that you're going to use. Just make sure that nothing's overpowering and that it's all done in the right kind of layers. So we then have our little, car our little camper van and it has all of its little pieces. So you've got your little door with its windows. Uh, we've got our little window at the side. We have our little tow bar there, goes at the front there. And we've got a little mat or a little step. And we have our little campfire, a little fire burning away there, so cute on that side. And then we're going to hang our little clothes out strung from the line there so you can imagine all the different colors and different fabrics you can use for those i've just gone for plain with those we're going to be sewing a stitching line for that one and also i've cut 10 little pieces using a template for your little bunting and i've done bunting obviously in that little two-way uh, design you can just have a strip of bunting coming across here if you don't want bunting on it 
just leave it off because you could always add a lovely little panel here with perhaps perhaps a little traveling camping message um, on the road again or something like that it's very sweet I used to make a little cushion cover that they had a camper and on the road again and that was always very cute um, or perhaps you might want to just put somebody's name on it which would be very sweet so on my little camper I also add a couple of little printed out words I've just got family and friends there I often get asked about where I get my words from if you want to give it a try I actually just I actually put a I get a one sheet a4 sheet of fusible webbing or heat and bond and I press it to a, a homespun cotton and I press it and I cut the edges very very exactly to an A4 make sure it's all really well sealed and I actually just run it through my printer I've just got an ordinary printer and it, and it does that very well remember though that these aren't um, if you're going to be washing it I don't know how color fast they are although once you've pressed them they usually are, are pretty good so that's worth a try you can give that a go um, otherwise you can put any kind of little extra thing there you're also going to need a big button for the wheel a little one for the little jockey wheel there and I like to put a little button there that just looks like a little light there so that's about it now if you're making this as a placemat you probably don't want the buttons in the way so I would replace those perhaps with a piece of fabric that suits or a little piece of felt um, to get that same same effect only flat so from here let's move all of our little bits and I know there are a lot of little bits there but it's all put together in a certain way and I'll take you through every step so move our little campfire away and then we're going to start now the first thing that we do is we're going to press on our little trees so our little trees actually sit two and a half centimeters from this left side so at its widest point if you just measure two and a half centimeters there which is exactly where it's sitting and it's going to line up with the base of your little quilt section there we're just going to press that one on and then when we sew the top to the bottom we're going to have this little base nicely incorporated into the seam so that's the only thing that we do first before we put them together so I'm going to press that one on with a hot iron and a protective cloth and then I'm going to use my preferred sewing method now throughout this quilt of course you could sew it with a blanket applique stitch you could spend a lot of time on this little one um, or for the sake of time I'm going to be sewing this entire little quilt on the machine um, sometimes I like to pick out little bits and pieces that I will sew by hand with a blanket applique stitch but this one just came together really well on the machine it was very quick to make so I'm going to go right the way around that edge to the bottom there once I have that pressed into place and there we have my little trees pressed on and I have stitched around the outside now before we go any further I jumped ahead there I need to show you that we're also going to need our side panels for our little quilt and the measurements for those are 21.5 centimeters by 3.5 centimeters for those two and they go either side of your little quilt and the top and bottom panels are 26 centimeters by 3.5 centimeters so just choose something that really frames up your little quilt well um, I'm going to go for a black this time to really give it that kind of picture frame sort of look you'll also need um, some batting now I prefer cotton batting a nice fine cotton bat batting if you can get fusible that's good I've made mine fusible with a, a piece of heat and bond um, and that one is roughly uh, around about 24 centimeters by 24 centimeters if it's a little big we can just trim that back when we need to I also have a fabric piece already interface that will accommodate my whole quilt and I will be cutting my little back of my quilt too from that once that's all assembled 
so I've got that one just put aside so from here our next step is that we're going to sew our lower panel to our top panel just across that seam there uh, my seam allowances are about four millimeters and I'm just going to make sure those edges are really lined up there and just stitch straight along that base. Make sure you're back and forward at the start and the finish. Then I'm going to press that little seam out open and flat. So you can see there's my little top and bottom panel joined and I've pressed that seam nice and open and flat. And it's very important to press all the way through these little projects. And so our next step is to, this, all, all these pieces go on in a certain way um, so there's method to my madness you'll have to trust me um, so the next little piece is the little toe bar now that little one sits just over that that little horizon line and that one is almost two centimeters from the edge and I've got it all laid out like this because everything just fits in nicely. If we have everything coming too far this way, we won't have room for our little washing line. So make sure that that one's just, just about two centimetres and just overlapping that little one there, that little line there. And the bottom line should be nice and straight. Now what you want to do is just check it with the bottom line of your little camper van. So you pop that on, you see your little camper van just sits over a little and that we still see some of the tree. See that there? Now don't be afraid at this stage to have a little play and lay out all your little pieces in place so you're getting an idea of where everything goes. Just to make sure that you're getting it all right, gives you a good overview and it also helps too with your colours. You might actually lay it all out and go, you know what, I need a stronger colour here or a weaker colour here. It's all about having a look at them all together. So once you've got that position right, you want to go ahead and press that little toe bar in place. So you see we've got my little toe bar in place there and I've gone ahead and stitched around that one in my black thread. And now that that one's nicely in place, we can see exactly where our little camper goes. So you only want a little bit of overlap there. And you can see we want to keep this little bottom line nice and straight. Line it up with this line here. And you should just get a little bit of overlap there. And we're going to press that one on. And then we're going to press that little strip section exactly over the top of it and then we can go back and we can do the same thing stitch around and then across this line with your preferred choice of stitching now i might add here at this point um, you very clever people out there who do um, free motion embroidery machine embroidery this little quilt is a great project for that because it's it's very animated it's very sketchy and you can use all of your different coloured threads and get that lovely little hand-drawn look. So, uh, so many options here with this little one. So I'm going to go ahead and press those on and do my stitching. And you'll notice that throughout this little quilt, I really am making sure that my thread colours are outlining my little pieces. So I'm making sure that they're really clearly defined. Because there's so much going on, we want to make sure we can see that the outline of every little piece. There you can see the main body of my little camper van is on there now and our next step is to add our little door and our window. So I will press those on and stitch around those and then I will add their little centre pieces in exactly the same way. Make sure they're nicely spaced. Your little door, make sure that there's a little bit of space around each piece so that they really stand out. And you'll stitch those on also and at this stage too if you're going to add anything little extra there we can pop those on now too and now's a good time to check your little wheel placement you don't want to be interfering with anything there you want to don't want to be covering anything up once you've got your layout right just press those on and do your same chosen stitching around those pieces so that's all of my little uh, pieces on my actual little camper van now. 
So you notice I keep bringing my little button back in. It's just to check how everything is going, making sure that it's all everything is getting put in the right spot. So our next pieces to go on is our little campfire. And that's done in a couple of pieces and a little step. So our little step sits just under. You can see there under our little door. And then our little campfire. It's just over to the right of the quilt. It's just giving us some balance with some a lot of go, a lot going on here. And we're going to balance that up with our little campfire here. So we want to remember that we're going to be sewing seams here and here. So we don't want to get too close to anything there. Now I like to press those two on first and I stitch around those two and then I add my little crossover logs and I actually do them one at a time. So I press one on, stitch around that one and then press the other one on and it's actually easier because you can get everything exactly in the right spot. So have a look at how you're going, how the overall balance is going, where you're going to put it not too close to here and also not too close to this line here. We want that little top of that flame to sit a little lower there. Press those on and stitch around those just the same way. So there we go. We've got a little campfire, our little step in place and our next step is our little clothes line. So what we need to do here is you see the way that I've got them laid out. I've got socks, pants and a little shirt but of course it can be in any order you like. Um, but we have to imagine a little clothesline starting from about here and we're going to be stitching it in across the edge here. So you can make it on any angle you like um, but remember it, it will look best if nothing is touching. So you don't want your little garments touching your little caravan and you want a tiny bit of space between each one of your little garments and of course remember we've got a seam here that's going to be sewn. So we, we don't want to be too close to that edge. You can see there that we've left a little bit of space there with our little t-shirt. So I like to press those on all together, get that exactly right. And then I do my stitching around each of those little ones. Those socks are pretty tiny, but I find I can still get around them. And on my little pants, I do a little center seam on those pants. It's just that little bit of extra detail. And around my little shirt, once they're all sewn on, then it's much easier to sew a little clothes line in because we can follow the top line of those little items. And we add our little pegs by hand a little bit later. So you can go ahead and press those on. Again, checking your color balance. Um, swapping it around might, might work better for you. The different colors, you might want to try a few different colors of, of your little clothing. Um, press those and stitch those into place. So once I've got all of my little clothing all stitched nicely into place there, now I just have to sew a little line of, to indicate a little clothesline. And that will be from about the top here and it will just run straight across and across here. And I let my line show above those little curves there, like a line actually would. And then I like to bring it up here at the side. So it's fairly easy to follow that line just by the way you've got your little garments placed, but you can add a little starting mark here if you like and a little ending mark here so you can see where to link it up or you might want to use a, a heat erasable marker or something like that to actually draw your line in and then stitch over it. Now I've experimented with quite a few different colors for this stitching line. If you have, if you're going for a color scheme that is really themed, you might want to, you might have something that's all pinks and everything on there is pinks. You, you might want to use like a dark claret or burgundy for that little washing line to keep it all in keeping with it. Because I've just gone for an absolutely um, scrappy little quilt and I, I have not gone out and purchased fabrics for this, I've just jumped into my stash and just picked out whatever. Um, so I'm going to go with, I find that a black single line of stitching works best. When you're looking at it very closely, you might think, oh, that's a bit heavy. But when you step back a little from it, 
it gets quite lost if it's any any other color although you could use a, a dark brown would work too um, just so that it shows up so I'm going to stitch that one into place across there and then I'm going to add my little pegs a bit later when we add our buttons right so you can see now that I've got my little stitching line in of my little clothes line that's actually quite visible there which is what I was after and so our next step is to add our bunting now your bunting can be as I said before you can have you know two strands you can have just the one going across here I have my little piece going across here a little crossover and it coming down here so but you can do whatever you like so if, to do my little layout you just need 10 little uh, pennant pieces cut out and it's just a matter of laying those out in a way where you can link up that line so that it is a nice fluid line so I'm going to be stitching in the same black and right across here and just capturing just the very top of each of those little pennants you can see with this little one I've just caught the top of them and once I've done that and then I go ahead and I stitch on the lower edge of each of them and that just saves me having to sew around the whole thing and then going over it with that black row of stitching so once you've got your placement where you want it it's just a matter of going and pressing those into place sewing your black line of stitching or whatever color you're going to use and then going ahead and sewing those little pennants in place okay so now we've got our little bunting all into place they're all nicely stitched on and the front of our panel is done except for our buttons I like to put the buttons on once I've put my my batting behind so now we're going to add our little side and top and bottom pa panels now you might find I did give you measurements for these strips but that can change depending on your work on the front of your quilt and and your seam allowances and so on so perhaps the better way to cut your strips is to wait until your front is all assembled and then you can take that measurement there and then when your sides are on take the measurement across um, my width is 3.5 centimeters three and a half centimeters but the length may vary for you and we do want it all to meet up so perhaps cut those after um, so I'm just going to line up each of those side panels on each side make sure those corners meet and I'm going to stitch straight down that side and straight down that side then I'm going to press those open and those little seams flat and open so that's our side panels on our seams are pressed flat and now we're just going to repeat that process with our top and bottom panels you might see what I mean about cutting those strips afterwards because I've added an extra bit on mine so um, it might pay to cut them after it's all assembled so I'll add my top and bottom exactly the same way and of course I'm very aware of you very clever quilters out there and you may want to put a proper quilt binding on this one this is just how I put it together really simply so that most people can manage it um, it's the quickest way I know how to frame one up but of course you can do your lovely mitered corners and all of that um, so I'm just going to add that top and bottom panel and there we go you see I've got my little quilt all framed up and um, all pressed out nice and flat and I've also been able to go ahead and press my wadding onto the back you can see that it's we've got a nice space around there so our side panels won't get congested in that seam um, and I will say this is a nice fine cotton batting I did use a little while ago on a mini quilt I used uh, just a synthetic batting it was absolutely awful it was so awful it was it compressed terribly and it was stiff and it, so definitely if you can get the lovely cotton batting because you've still got that lovely flexibility in it but it's still got uh, plenty of hold and it seems to be more dense so anyway I'm sure all you quilters already knew that um, so so now I can go ahead and I can sew uh, my buttons on and I can also add my little pegs and I've got a double thread of a brown a nice rust brown to do my little pegs and you can use embroidery thread I'm just going to come in from behind and come out just near the top of that little sock 
and just make that one little stitch extending above and that just creates my little peg I'm going to do that on each one and on the corners of these two here and then I'm going to go ahead and sew my buttons on now ideally I would like even though it's a wall hanging I would rather a flatter button than this one but I can't resist the fact that it's green and it's got a lovely white wall tire so <laughs> we're going to go with that one and uh, sew all those on in place that little one just sits over the base of your little your little jockey wheel there on the tow bar stitch those all into place and finish off our little pegs and now that my quilt front is complete and everything is sewn into place here, I've given it another press and I've been able to lay that on my pre-prepared fabric ready for the back piece and I've been able to pin that on and cut out my back quilt piece there and now all I need to do is pin or clip that one right the way around and we're going to sew that one I'm using a five millimeter seam allowance on this one we're going to be leaving an opening at the base here so that we can turn this little quilt through and we're going to be going right around that outside to the other side there give yourself a good or at least about 10 centimeters opening there to turn that through now if you're going to be hanging this little quilt and you need some kind of little tie or little loop now is when you would insert those little ribbon loops or the little pieces of of ribbon tie in there into your seam so that that is captured within that top seam I will probably just use a little clip type uh, quilt hanger so I don't need to add anything at all if you're making it as a placemat of course um, you don't need to add anything either so I'm going to go ahead sew that little one up right the way around and leave my little opening so that's my little quilt all stitched up and I'm just going to take off just those corners before I turn that one through I'm not going to trim that seam because it's quite small and we've kept the batting away from it so we shouldn't have too much bulk there so now I'll just turn that one through and give it a press now once you've got that one all turned through and pressed out you can see that what I've done is I've just gone around and top stitched the entire outside edge of that little quilt and I have then you can then go ahead and quilt it in any way you like by close by going around the outside with that top stitch we close that opening um, and now you can go ahead and quilt it any way you like now I just like to sew in the little stitch in the ditch around the frame of the whole quilt but I probably will just go across that little section too but you can quilt it all you clever quilters I'm sure you can have a whole lot of fun with that and there we have our finished little mini camper quilt it's been a whole lot of fun I hope you've had fun making this one it's certainly a really busy um, a very absorbing little quilt um, busier than probably what I normally do but it's fun to do something different I do remember with this one that that center panel there makes a fabulous cushion center um, I've made a few little camping cushions like this and they're absolutely beautiful when they're made up speaking of cushion covers who would like some cushion cover patterns I feel like making some cushion covers at the moment I'm loving my mini quilts so the cushion covers are just an extension of that so let me know if you'd like to see some cushion cover patterns and we can add to that make it up in all different colors as I have here and give to a camper friend I hope you've had fun well thank you all for sewing with me today and making up this little one I've actually really enjoyed this one I hope you have too it's a bit like drawing in fabric for me so I love it so I'm, I'm creating so many more of these I hope you stay and uh, and make them all so don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any of those free patterns everybody following me on, on Instagram that's awesome I'm really enjoying seeing the pictures that you're sending me I have been absolutely blown away this week by some incredible little sewing machines little sewing machine pin cushion pattern that I did if you haven't seen it check it out um, you are doing amazing things with them I'm so excited 
and I love to see it. So how about you pop over to Pinterest too? Follow me on Pinterest and you can see the board that I've set up for you all. It's called You Made It. And you can see what everybody else in our little community is doing with my patterns and it's, and it's really exciting to see. So definitely be a part of that. So make sure everybody remember all of those good things that come to you in your day. Make sure that you pay them forward. And until next time, it's Huru from me.